welcome to the MBS Show Review. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Last time on Dragon Ball Z, it kind of went like this. Rah! Now in this season, it's like this. Oh! And everything's blue now. Ooh. Hey, just wait until I get to Super Saiyan Plaid, then we'll talk. Oh no. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, well, like we mentioned last week, this week, this is the Patreon-sponsored video by Nem Dragatorius, and he wants us to talk about, or discuss about Dragon Ball Super. It's really a general discussion, mostly our thoughts on said episode, or said series, and let me double check what he really wants before we jump right into this one. Oh my, I should have done this earlier, but you know what? This is an NBA show, full of derps and whatnot, and yeah. <laughs> Plus we can make this a really... Really awkward song. I'm super. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Yay. But anyway, yeah, it's just a general discussion for Dragon Ball Super. So anywho, so for you guys who don't know what Dragon Ball is, it's basically one of the most popular animes out there. Well, let's just say that it is really, really popular. I've known about it since my youth. And Silver, I'm guessing that you're in the same boat. Well, my teenage years. Ah. I'm older than most of you folks. Uh, true that. <laughs> well, since it's a discussion about Dragon Ball Super, but I, I want to go back, way, way back. When did you first discover Dragon Ball? Well, I, I remember I briefly caught glimpses of it. I think I saw a snippet of Dragon Ball and then Dragon Ball Super, or no, Dragon Ball Z, while I was channel surfing, but I didn't really get to know it until it came on Toonami. Toonami was the gateway for much of American anime. Yep, that's true, because Toonami was, well, the most easiest way to access all type of anime, if I remember right, or just um, high-end cartoons, right? Yeah, it popularized anime in America. It gave a boom to the industry. Mm, true that, true that. And also started a lot of dubbing companies, um, for reference to that, I would suggest a YouTuber by the name of Bennett the Sage. He does a lot of retro style anime reviews and, well, anime reviews. And it's fun to watch just knowing about old style anime or what happened in the olden days. And most of them are dub animes. So you get to know a lot of people back in the days. Like Kyla Bear, the voice of Ryu in Street Fighter and also other characters in some animes. But as for me, um, I discovered Dragon Ball when I was in... Was after kindergarten again? Hell. <laughs> uh, no, well, that, but what's the school level? I, I, I for, How do I put this? Well, kindergarten is like preschool, and then there's elementary. Yes, so I think I was in elementary when I discovered this. The only reason why I ask is because the naming system for education in Malaysia follows the Brits, while in America, you guys, well, you have your preschool to your elementary to your uh, middle school to in high school, while we just have standard one through six, and then we get primary school one through six. So you get the general idea of what I'm saying. But anyway, um, when I was in middle school, was it? Oh, hell, hell plus. <laughs> no, not hell plus. Before, after kindergarten, hell. <laughs> so when I was in hell. <laughs> uh, plus. Um, I discovered the manga translated to Malay. And that point, it was on chapter five or issue five of the manga read through it kind of piqued my interest and because i was a kid i didn't know patience so i went to the store and bought the chinese version of the manga and by that point it was issue 33 if i remember right um it started the cell saga and oh my god that got me hooked and i started buying dragon ball back then and got into it deep and highly enjoyed it. And I have to say that my childhood was full of Dragon Ball figures, posters, games, and so on. Like, that time, 
it was just awesome. And I even remember buying a VHS copy of Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Z from a video store that was recorded from Japan and shipped down. Here. Like the things that we had to do to get Dragon Ball content back in the day was so hard. But nowadays it's just stupid simple. So yeah, Dragon Ball Super is quote unquote after what happened in Z in the Majin Buu saga. So Silver, what do you think about this one? Like what's your initial reaction to Dragon Ball Super? Well, I'm very much enjoying it. Uh, I like, I like the characters they've added. I like the, the world they've expanded and a lot of the follow-up they've done. Goku has surpassed anything in his own universe. So now that he's moving both into other universes and, uh, God tier. <laughs> yep. Some episodes have hit very hard. Some have been downright hilarious. A big part of it, however, is really redefining Goku. Hmm. We've always, we've always seen him as the big hero, but this one is showing just sort of the darker aspects of who he is. And though he himself is not a dark or cruel character, the impact he's had is, especially in the more recent arc, is very, very negative. Oh, true that. And, well, how do I put this? Uh, initially, Dragon Ball Super came out as a special or a movie in theaters. Um, I think it was the Battle of the Gods. Oh, what was it? What was that yep. arc? Battle of the Gods, was it? In the movies? Battle of the Gods. That was the first one. And then Resurrection F was the Freezer Returns. Yeah. And honestly, people who saw that was kind of let down by how that movie was. In all honesty, they retconned a lot of things with that one. With Battle of Gods? Mm, true, yeah. Huh. I, I think the movie didn't do much retconning, but the anime version did a lot of retconning. Here's the funny thing. If, if you've watched the movies, then Battle of Gods and uh, Resurrection F, those two arcs were a lot less fun because I've already seen the abridged version, and it felt more fluid. This one is really just... Padding. It feels like the old Dragon Ball of dragging it out, dragging it out, yep. dragging it out. Yeah, but least... Drag on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at least they set up a few things to kind of explain minor details, like Beerus, the God of Destruction. Why is Bezita so scared of him? Well, that's because he's the God of Destruction, and he once saw his dad got whooped by Beerus. And who is Beerus, by the way? Like we mentioned, he's the God of Destruction. With a point... He's also Kitty Cat. Yes. Or a demonic bunny. I have trouble telling sometimes. Cat. Um, Beerus is a cat. Inspired by Akira Toriyama's, at that time, dying cat who was in the vet. Doctor says that um, the kitty didn't have much time to live, but soon recovered really well. And yeah, inspired by that, kitty was alive and yeah, became God of Destruction. <laughs> oh, good. I don't like stories where the kitty or the puppy passes away. It just... It did make me sad. Yeah. Why do you want to make me sad? Yeah, true, but this, this is good. This is, this is a good story. It's a happy ending. Indeed, indeed. So, we were kind of all over the place. So, let's, I, I don't know how to approach this one. Silver, got any ideas? Well, let's start off with just the core group. The, the guys who have carried over from Dragon Ball Z. Specifically Goku and Vegeta, but also Bulma, Gohan, Krillin. Maybe Yamcha? <laughs> Yamcha. Oh, yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, Yamcha's there too. <laughs> He's like, I'm just happy to be included. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah, the, the core group. So, you got everyone there, the regular Z fighters. You got Goku, Gohan, Goten, Vegeta, Bluma, Trunks, Krillin, Master Roshi, Pico. And you know what? If I were to say everyone there, It'll be one hell of a list. It'll be almost similar to Seppi stating out the name of the Scotsman's children. Ugh. Oh, God. That went on. Well, the Scotsman was very prolific. Indeed. But with this one, you know what? Goku. Let's deal with Goku. Goku here is uh. the main character of the show. And 
he is kind of the instigator for almost everything. Well, he's proving in this series to be more of a problem than a solution. Uh, Dragon Ball Z, he was always the, the nuclear option. Everyone was just trying to hold out until Goku could get there. Except for the Cell games, which is probably why Cell is my favorite villain. <laughs> oh, you know what the Cell games are. Oh, God. Well, okay, plus it makes for a really great Dragon Ball bridge. <laughs> I'm thinking of you, Goku. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. <laughs> thinking of you. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm just going to state it out there. In Dragon Ball Super, I don't like Goku. I just don't like him. Yeah, I'm frustrated by him as well. Okay, what, what's your reason, Silver? Why you? Why, why don't you like him? What, what makes you frustrated? In the past, Goku was at least trying to save the day. He was working to stop an enemy. Now, in, in Dragon Ball Super, he seems to be inviting them just so he can satisfy his desire for combat and just to stave off boredom. The current uh, theme song talks a lot about boredom just sitting on you like a stone. And Goku, he's basically putting his desires before the world, which is one of the most emotionally unhealthy things. And yet everyone is like expects you to be like, oh, that's just Goku. He's so silly. Mm. Everyone's been counting Goku as a hero, but he's really only ever interested in satisfying his own combat. Saving the world is accidental. It's like saying you have a hurricane for a best friend. <laughs> You've just been very lucky up until now. Now it's coming back to bite you. Mm, true that, true that. And well, as for me, why I'm frustrated with Goku is, well, add on what Silver has to say. And also, he's just an idiot. I know Goku was never the sharpest tool in the shed. But the things that he's done or say in this series has compounded to a point where oh my god you're an idiot you're literally an idiot why are you doing the decision that you're doing a good example is when he faced off with frieza he battled with frieza and him being the smug character that he is stated that oh frieza you are not used to your body, so that's why you lose. Look at me. I am so powerful. Ha ha ha. And he got gunned down by a puny laser gun from a grunt. At least we know Goku's not bulletproof. Yeah. And there's even more to add on to this. One of the few things, or what sparked my anger is in the recent arc, the, what you call this, Universe Survival Saga. Beerus, the God of Destruction, told Goku not to get into contact with uh, Zeno, the ultimate god of... what? The man-child. <laughs> yeah, the man-child. Zeno, uh, I, I think he's some god. Yeah, whatever he is. Um, but anyway, Beerus, the God of Destruction for the Seven Realm, told him not to get into contact with him because you do not want to um, get him angry and destroy you. And Goku, with the idiot he is, goes up to Zeno and asks, Yo, you remember that promise that you said before about starting up the universal, um, uh, well, it's not universal, it's the, uh, tournament of powers? Yeah, when's that gonna happen? Yeah. Fun, yes, but at what cost? Silver, you want to tell the audience at what cost? Well, basically all the universes except the winner will get eliminated. Now, there's the argument to be made that Goku at least gave an option for one universe to survive, as all of them were already on the slate to get wiped out. But Zeno is so fickle and easily distracted that they could have bought more time or changed his mind, you know, give a few more centuries. As such, Goku still accelerated and drew Zeno's attention, all because he was bored. Actually, they were both bored. You've given... Okay, I was wrong to call Zeno a man-child because he really is a child child. Mm -hmm. And I cannot tell you how terrifying the thought is of a child having the power to destroy universes. But then Goku just keeps egging this kid on and putting everyone else in danger. Like, Goku, enough. Once is a charming mistake, but you keep doing it. True that. Yeah. So, uh, okay, granted that Zeno wanted to destroy a set of universe to, well, have some clean slate or whatever it is without the tournament. So suddenly universe um, 
seven or seven six or whatever the lower tier universe will be wiped out. But now with the tournament of powers, at least the winner will still be there, and the losers, well, too bad you didn't win. So yeah, Goku, 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 no, Goku, Goku, no. And here's the kicker: um, in the uh, Universal Six Saga, where Beerus and his quote unquote brother got into a disagreement and started to, well, what's the word I'm looking for? They have an exhibition match or a tournament to see who which universe gets the ultimate Dragon Ball. Did they call it Super Dragon Ball? The, the Super Dragon Balls, which are as big as a planet. Mm-hmm. So that's their thing. So the winner gets to get the Super Dragon Ball to make the ultimate wish. So yeah, that happened. They fight. So they fight and they fight and they fight and they fight. And Goku was introduced to this one fighter called Hit. He is a hit man with the power to manipulate time, which is cool. Very cool. Yeah. And somehow, in filler episodes for the future Trunks saga, uh, Hit wants to kill Goku. And the reason is because there was a hit on Goku. Do you want to guess who made that hit? Could it be Besita? Could it be Frieza? Or could it be Gamcha? Who do you think, Silver? Well, I, I know who did it, but I will say it was a clever idea. Everyone's suspecting someone from Universe 6. Mm-hmm. And then you get the big reveal. It's like, oh, that's actually kind of sick and twisted. <laughs> yeah. But funny. Although it also, again, gave rise to a great Dragon Ball Super. We've been working so hard to be rivals, and then he goes out and pays for it. <laughs> I thought we had something. <laughs> True that. Uh, but yeah, if you guys don't know, Goku put a hit on himself just so he could fight Hit. <clears throat> That's That again is Goku being very reckless with uh, his training. The, this has gone past something he can just do every day to an addiction. Yeah, uh, I'm stewing right now. <laughs> I am very... Silver, why don't you take over for a bit? Because I need to cool down. So yes, Goku Goku is not being redefined in many ways. They haven't changed his character, but they're showing the downside of his character at the same time. But moving onwards, ever onwards and upwards, Vegeta is enjoying the opposite. He's been become a much more likable character because he finally mellowed out. And is actually, at times, willing to admit how much he cares for his family. Uh, he's always been prideful, but now he's no longer, I'm going to risk the world to satisfy my hunger. That's Goku's job now. <laughs> uh, this is this is Vegeta being his better self. And true that. V- Vegeta, if you guys can remember in the Z saga or the Z series... He is a hot hit, very impulsive. He doesn't want to ask for help or doesn't want to admit that he needs help. Remember the Cell Saga or the Android Saga where 18 just broke his hand, like in Super Saiyan form? Like what? <laughs> Could you just imagine that? Like 18 just casually breaks his arm. Wow, okay. And then he's like, I, he, now he'd be like, yeah, I want a rematch. Let's see how you do with the blue do. <laughs> oh, gets pulverized. But still, Vegeta here, like you mentioned, has mellowed out, has gotten that likable personality. And one of the few things that I really enjoy is that he here is a more responsible character than Goku as a father figure. Okay, the way that he treats his child is a bit stern, but that's his way of being a dad. Like, probably he took it from his father, so that's what he's doing here. And the length that he will go to make Bruma happy is awesome. Remember that one scene near the beginning? I I think it was Trunks' birthday, was it? Yeah, Vegeta. He groused through the whole thing, but he liked, on some level, he liked spending the day with his family. Mm Mm-hmm. And also, he he can handle mush bits. So, yeah, that's cool. Well, I would think he'd be finely suited. <laughs> yeah. Just attack! 
<laughs> I never backed out from a challenge. <laughs> ah! Oh, but still, that, that was that was also awesome a moment. Just just looking at Vegeta Mello out and just be a family man is amazing. And also at the same time too, um, within the beginning of the uh, Universal Saga, Vegeta became that times two. So with another kid coming along, he's most concerned of Bluma's safety. So Goku invites him to the Tournament of Power and Vegeta says, nah, I need to deal with this because I don't want anything bad to happen. I need to be there for my wife and children. And wow, that is a very responsible thing to say. And of course, we who we'll get to in a minute, we says like, well, here, I'll fix that. Boop, here's your kid. <laughs> It's like every mother in the world is like, I want that! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, since you brought him up, Silver, who is Wish? Wish is the assistant to Beerus, the, and yet he is Beerus' superior in many ways. Mm-hmm. He is an actual angel who serves at the God of Destruction's behest, uh, both keeping him in line, but also acting as an assistant. Whis also has taken over Goku and Vegeta's training, which has led to some pretty hilarious episodes. Yep, yep. Uh, so Whis, 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 Whis here is technically an angel. Um, since there's ten universe, was it? Uh, at least eleven. Yeah, eleven. So technically, there's eleven angels, and each are assistant to God of Destruction. To keep them in line, to assist them in everything they need. And Wisher has been shown to be at the same level of, as Beerus, or even stronger. It's not known. And one of the few things... Oh, I'm sorry? I, I would assert it's stronger. He He's made Beerus sleep with one chop. <laughs> yeah, well, probably. And one of the few powers that we know he has here is... Speed, well, speed is a given, but the most prevalent here is the manipulation of time. I think he can roll back time for an hour, was it? Oh, only like three minutes. Three minutes, hmm. You can get a lot done in three minutes, but, but still. Actually, I guess, what, what if he used the three minutes to go back in time and warn himself, hey, you need to go back three minutes? <laughs> nah, I don't think you can. There's a limit to what he can do. Not 100% sure. He, did they mention it in the series? Well, honestly, Super seems to change the rules quite a bit. Mm, true that. And yeah, it, it, it's still fun, but I, I like we, I find him charming, but then he's also, he's also very dark. One of the ending themes talks about devils disguised as angels, and that, that really does describe Weiss and his extended family. Oh yeah, true that. I mean, all of the angels here are, okay, they're, they're there, they're assistants to the God of Destruction, they're really powerful, depending on the characteristics. Like, remember Hit when Goku um, hired him to, well, put to put a hit on him? Yeah, that thing. It's with Wish's help contacting his sister from Universe 6 to put the contract on Goku. So it's like, hmm, yeah, yeah. Wish, you idiot. <laughs> And again, Vegeta's like, oh, come on! I thought we had something! <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. So, yeah. Ah. Yeah. So, there's Wish. And also, now, do we want to talk about Beerus? Oh, yes, Beerus is fun. I found him more charming in uh, Battle of Gods than in the series. He was a bit more refined or civil. This This version in the TV series, he's more... Selfish and mm, what's the best word? Snively. He 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 basically is not above bribing or trying to weasel his way out of a problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in the movie version of Virus, I think they wanted to have that air of uh, threat and malice. Like, is malice the right word? In the movie, he could have some malice. Yeah. I mean, he he could still fly off the handle. Yeah, but still, in the movie, they want to show him as a threat, and it works. But in the TV series, all that personality being rough and gruff won't work, because you're not the main star. So we need to add in a little bit more personality in you, and hence we get the food-addicted Beerus, who's really like ramen. Oh, you know, he likes everything. Anything with good food. Oh, yeah, true that. 
Although one of the funniest was when he, thanks to Dr. Slump, was it? <laughs> yeah. He got, the, he got the most delicious food in the world, except that they made a turd in the same machine just before. So <laughs> that did not go well for him. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, no, no. It's just no, no. Uh, but still, but still, Beerus here is a character that I like, I enjoy. He's, he first appeared, he first appeared to be one of those characters that, oh god, no, not another Vegeta. But as the episode goes on, you get to see his other side where, okay, I'm the god of destruction, but still, I want to survive because I don't want to die here. Not like this, not with these idiots helping to defend the earth. And by idiots, I mean Goku. <laughs> and well, Vegeta, Vegeta can be kind of stupid too. The big thing is that both Beerus and Whis are always saying to him, if you two work together, you could probably take me down. But they never will. They're too prideful. And that's why, well, uh, there's a saying, keep, uh, keep your friend close, but your enemy is closer. And this is one of the way that Whis and Beerus are doing. <laughs> I don't know. There seem to be more frenemies at this point. Oh, yeah. Everybody's a frenemy. You get a frenemy, and you get a frenemy, and you're a frenemy. Everybody's Everybody a frenemy. frenemy. Yeah, indeed. Uh, but still, Beerus here, or animated Beerus, I like his character. He's very fun to be around. And where do we go next? Should, like, we talk about the new characters, some, some old, some new. And where do you want to head off, Silver? Well, in truth, there's a whole legion of new characters, especially with the uh, Universe Survival arc going on. We're getting teams from all over. And ultimately, I think it's more fun to just talk about who's being improved. Because I'll say it right now. Gohan, I felt, got uh, shortchanged in the Majin Buu arc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now we get to see him in his life as a father, get to see him... uh retraining himself and trying to overcome the barriers that held him back. He's not as strong as Goku, but he's a better person than Goku and more reliable. Oh, he's the guy who, who who will fight to save lives. Goku will fight just to enjoy a good fight. True that. And at the same time, too, when you look at some of the characters, like Piccolo, Piccolo here has become a sturdy structure for Gohan to look up to as a father figure. Even that was pointed out in Dragon Ball A Bridge. He's also become quite the grandfather figure to Pan, even though she keeps looking to her biological grandfather. It's like, no, Pan, go with one. He's so much more dependable. Go with the green alien dude. He's much more dependable than that monkey guy. Ay, ay, ay. One, of the, one of the best images is uh, Piccolo still trying to keep his arms folded posed, but He's rocking Pan's cradle with his right leg. Yeah. Oh, fun fact. Um, Father's Day was a few months back, but the official uh, Twitter for Dragon Ball said Happy Father's Day to the best dad ever. Would you care to guess who um, picture was used for that? I sincerely hope it was Piccolo. Indeed. Yeah. And it's like, what? <laughs> what happened to... <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> And Piccolo here is not bad too. His character has improved greatly throughout the series. <laughs> Again, we're quoting Dragon Ball Abridged. Goku, we're not going to tell you how to be a dad. I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Still, wow. Who would have guessed Piccolo would be a better father than Goku? It's, it shows the, the magic that Gohan can weave. Also, I, I love Videl in this. She's... Great character. It's, you have these Dragon Ball mothers and heroines who are all sort of cold and brash or or in your face. Videl has really mellowed out and yet is still a very strong character. So I enjoy that. But we could go on and on about characters. I mean, everybody's gotten a little bit of a turn limelight. Even Yamcha had an episode where he was actually doing well. Yeah, yeah. Fun fact, Yamcha is really good at baseball. Really good at baseball and surviving... <laughs> Uh, explosive blasts in the most indignant pose. Oh, uh, what was the line again? I think I've seen this somewhere before. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that pose brings back unpleasant memories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if you don't know, just go Google Yamcha death pose. Yeah, it's there somewhere. <laughs> but Silver, what is it that you want to talk about? Well, let's talk about 
the arcs. Mm. And which one? So we gotta, let's, there's an order, a structure to this. So obviously there's first the, the battle of gods where we're introduced to God of Destruction, Beerus Saga, which is basically, it's battle of the gods, but extended to be an anime format. And in truth, I felt this struggle because you knew, you, you knew what was going to happen. You'd seen the movie. Yep. Th- that's one of the problems for this one. Like we know what happened, but. When I watched this, I saw, oh, they're trying to insert new, uh, things for this one, like new scenes, new info drops and whatever. So it's like, huh, interesting. So yeah, it's okay, but not really the, what should we call this? Best. So yeah, I would say watch the movie version. It's much faster. As is the Golden Freezer saga. Mm-hmm. Now, I will say, I will say the, the filler episodes were, between these two were very funny. Uh, Goku pulling a Kool-Aid man. And how's uh, Bulma, Bulma tells Chi Chi that Vegeta's gone t- to, uh, train with Beerus. And Goku is in the next room and goes, what did you say? <laughs> he just breaks through the wall. Oh yeah. Giving rise, giving rise to any number of memes online. <laughs> oh yeah. The, those were fun, but then the Golden Frieza saga comes up, and they drew a few things differently than in the than in the movie. But even then, it's the same answer, and you feel like ah, again, I, I've seen this already. True, but the few new inclusions were one of Frieza's henchmen training with him, and that made him uh, stronger. Well, at least it makes sense in this way because. Uh, Frieza training with no one means nothing. So they added this character to show that, oh, Frieza is training with someone to get stronger. And here's the result. And with that, we get to see the guy training with Frieza becoming strong too. And then being defeated in the most indignant way. Headbutt to the crotch. Oh, God. Followed closely by the return of Captain Ginyu. Yay! Just because. <laughs> yeah, why not, right? Oh, God. Yeah, why not? So I guess I guess the henchman is still wandering around in in frog form. Yeah, but still, um, this second uh, arc, I say just go watch the movie. No difference. Now on to the next saga that's totally new, which is Universe Six Saga. This one is interesting. This one was hyped out because it showed that in the Dragon Ball universe, there's more than one universe. They explain that there's 12 universes and they're in universe 7 and there's also a similar universe to theirs, which is universe 6. And universe 6 had some interesting characters. That's where Hit came from. We get another version of Frieza Mm -hmm. who at first seems like Frieza's opposite, but no. I think the most interesting was Cabot who brings out the, the best in Vegeta. Yeah, and for you guys at home who don't know who, uh, Cavit was, is it? Ka- Ka- give me a second, I'm trying to see his name just to pronounce it right. Yeah, uh, Cab, Cabba? Cab, Cabba. Well, okay. Uh, Cab. It's, it's, it's a ver- it's an alternate on cabbage. That's yeah. Okay. Oh, that's another word that we need to, that's another thing we need to highlight too. But anyway, uh, Cabba here is a Saiyan, but they're totally different from Vegeta's version of Saiyan. Um, in Universe 6, the Saiyan are a military force, but they're more of a guardian instead of a dictating ruling type. Am I getting it right? They don't really dictate. They're soldiers for hire, but they're more freelance agents of justice. Yeah, that, that's one way to put it. And they're known for peace. So that's cool. And since... Well, and since they're not prone to fighting like how Universe 7 is, uh, they don't really power up like how Universe 7 is. Um, it takes Vegeta a lot of co- coaxing and punching and also name-calling to get Kaba to get to Saiyan Rage. <laughs> rage! Urge to kill rising! I get Take it. Ah! The other opponents in the Universe 7 weren't all that interesting. A giant metal man who has low self-esteem <laughs> and a big teddy bear who can take the punches but is easily wrung out. 
Yeah, true, true. And well, there were a lot of other combatants here. But one of the interesting one here is uh, Frost. V. Nixon? Hmm? Who? What? Frost V. Nixon. No. <laughs> uh, Frost, like you mentioned before, is Frieza's doppelganger. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and like you mentioned before, he seems like the good guy being the whole, what you want to call this, uh, peacekeeper of the universe and everybody thinks highly of him. But he's just a sick snake oil salesman. Oh, and even better, uh, he tries to pass off that his third form is his final. Hmm. Which H.R. Giger's role in his grave is, or no, sorry, uh, embryonic fluid pod <laughs> buried in the cold depths of Tartarus. <laughs> yeah, and Goku just uh, states, like, come on, you're not fooling, man. I know a guy that's like you, and he, this is final form. You're not fooling anyone. And he's shocked by that too. <laughs> he's very shocked, and he's und and he's undone by another newish character, Jaco. Jaco, <laughs> who is pretty fun. Oh wow, Jaco! If I do remember right, Jaco is the red guy, was it? Uh, he's the he's the space policeman. Oh, he's yeah. purple. Yeah, okay, purple true. with a green face. He's just like, yes, no one can top my keen eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you say that, Silva? Well, he just looks so funny uh, as he poses. <laughs> he says he's super elite, but he's actually one of the worst policemen you could ever run into. He true, that very, very unreliable. And yet, he does have skills. One cannot deny the skills. True, true. And, well, we're, we're forgetting the most important uh, character in the Universe 6 saga, Manoka. Ah, yes, the greatest fighter in Universe 6, 7. Yep. And remember what we mentioned before that about how amazing Hit is? Um, during the fight, Go, Bizita lost to Hit. Goku lost to Hit. And Manoka here, with one punch, ringed out Hit. So, wow, that's just, wow. Yeah, it was one punch, man. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, to be honest, it was a uh, case of hit being adept to Goku. <laughs> and the thing with Manoka here is, uh, you, you better see it, Silver. I, I don't know how to. Well, the, the thing is that Monica is basically Beerus's attempt to motivate Goku. He's just the car, he's just a delivery guy who got roped into this. <laughs> yep. So and hit hit basically took the fall just to just to rain on Universe uh, Six's parade. Uh, Beer, Beerus and Champa, his brother, they get all full of airs that they're the true, they're the stars of this really, and so it's sort of laughing at these lowly mortals. One th one thing, I would probably be an atheist in the Dragon Ball universe because their gods are awful. There isn't a single one that actually seems to be doing their job right. Oh well, there's the god of hell who's taking care of the gates. Well, he's he's more bureaucratic and just sort of. Uh, I, I feel like sending you to hell, you to hell, you to hell, you to hell, you to hell. Uh, it's like, man, I wonder, wonder what the people who got into heaven did right. <laughs> yep, in that universe, who knows? But I just sort of laugh at how bad. The divine rulers are no wonder. No wonder Goku and company have to always train to get stronger. They can't rely on the actual deities. <laughs> True that. But still, the battle between Universe Six ends on a high note, where Zeno comes and asks what's going on. I don't know if I call that a high note. That is Doom Incarnate appearing before you. This is a kid who plays with planets uh, during uh, boredom. And we'll destroy them just on a lark. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, but with the battle between Universe 6 and 7, um, Zeno took notice and said that, yeah, what's this? This looks like fun. We should do this. Remember that, folks. Zeno said we should do this. And Goku remembers. <sighs> and that, that's not going so well right now. Not right now. Goku's not looking so hot. 
Yeah, well, we'll get to that later. We after the Future Trunks saga. Remember that character, Future Trunks? Oh, uh, oh, Future Trunks. Good to see him again. Yeah, everybody loves the Future Trunks, except for Zamasu, the villain, who is also Goku Black. <laughs> oh, I see. You blame the Black Goku. <laughs> oh God, no. But <clears throat> that's racist. Oh God, no. But anywho, long story short. It seems that there's a new villain in Trunks' world, and that villain is Goku Black, or a person that looks like Goku. But dresses all in black because he's goth. Yep. He's he's complicated. (laughs) Yep. He's edgy. (sighs) Indeed. So, anywho, let's see. One of the few differences between... Uh, trunks in the Dragon Ball Z saga and this one is his hair. Um, over there is purple. In this one is blue. Any explanation why? No, right? Well, he's a, he's a Saiyan crossbreed and his mother's genes are probably asserting themselves, probably much like the whole package. It's like, Vegeta's genes! I'm turning this kid's hair blue! <laughs> oh, wow. We, we haven't even mentioned Bruma. Being in control of Vegeta, like, people think Vegeta's hardcore? No. There's only one time, uh, I think I've seen Bul- Bulma flustered, and that's when Goku accidentally teleported into a room and Vegeta's all, you spy on my wife? No, why would I want to look at her saggy breasts? <laughs> oh, the look on Bulma's face. <laughs> oh, talking about, okay, talking about that, well, let's just focus on this one here. Okay, um, one of the few things about this saga here is uh, Future Trunks universe is being destroyed. The human race is almost extinct because of Goku Black. And Trunks here goes back to the past to ask for help from Goku and Vegeta and whoever who wants to come along. And, well, they start and fight and wish, notice that, hey, this guy here has the same... Aura as Goku. That's not good. Although now I'm all thinking of his samurai trunks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Back to the past samurai trunks. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, but anywho, Trunks invites uh, Goku and Vegeta back to the past and try to solve the problem of Goku Black. And well, I'm skipping a few things here, but one of the few things that make this char- make this arc really enjoyable is because of a female character that's with Trunks here. And said female character here is... I'm trying to look for a name. If you know Silver, please say it out. Mai. Mai, yes. Mai. Um, probably you guys don't remember who Mai is, but you, you remember that one mercenary with the... Um, with Pilaf's army. Yeah, Pilaf's army. Wow, I'm forgetting names. Yeah, that old woman who suddenly got turned young because of the Dragon Ball wish. Yep, it's her. And... Well, Future Trunks and her kind of hit it off and became a couple. Yes, she she's at least 50 years his senior, but thanks to Dragon Balls, it's not even the creepiest hair in anime. Yep, true. And I mean that. <laughs> true. I've seen worse. True that. I've seen so much worse. <laughs> uh, true that. And one of the things is, in a scene where Mai was knocked out, Future Trunks was really worried, and, well... They share a kiss. And Goku was surprised by that. Oh, God. So, you, you, you want to take over with this explanation? Well, well, what can we say about... Um, as I don't know what else to say about it. My, unfortunately, she's both the person who's trying to help, but she's always charging in and getting over her head so then the Dragon Ball characters have to, have to come save her. Unfortunately, the uh, Goku Black arc suffered because it had a very repetitive cycle. They go, they lose, they train, they go, they lose, they train. On and on it goes until you're starting to wonder, is this ever going to truly end, end, end? Uh, And well, it does, but not in the way that you would think it ends. Uh, Initially, Future Universe 10... Uh, there's a character named Zamas, Zamasu who really dislikes how humanity is because it's a never-ending cycle of uh, violence. So he plotted to 
take over Goku's body and get to the future to recruit himself to... You know what? This is confusing for me. Like, this whole saga doesn't make sense. Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. <laughs> Basically, Zamasu is an interesting villain in that he, he lost faith in humanity. He's, he's sort of a, a commentary on ourselves that we're so bad that even, even divine beings would give up. But he's also, uh, what happens when you put too much emphasis on strength and not enough on empathy. But he basically broke the rules of the universe and had everything planned out. As much as the heroes tried, there is a scene that is just heartbreaking when you realize that basically Zamasu got what he wanted. He lost, but he didn't. And so he just, he basically had won the fight before he even started. True that. And well, the only way they could have won was by calling in Zeno. And Zeno has to push the reset wall button. Now to destroy the world. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I need to point out that Goku never kissed Chi-Chi before. Yeah, that's a weird, weird, weird fact. Two kids and they've never shared a kiss. Uh, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. It, it's one of those things where I... Okay, it's cute that Goku is oblivious to the mating ritual of humans, but... There's an extent to that. Uh, in truth, I'm not. I'm not really a big fan of this idea that. Uh, well, Akira Toriyama basically states in an interview that Saiyans don't behave the same way. He's putting forth a big emphasis that your genes determine your personality. Mm-hmm. And I just don't agree with that. I believe that's an influence, but at the same time, I do believe in a. At least some nature and nurture. I, and I think the the thing that he mentioned that before was to the fact that how Goku is an anomaly. Because if I do remember right, Goku's type of Saiyan was not supposed to be strong. They were supposed to be, well, weaklings or just mid-tier characters. Like, they're just grunts. But somehow, Goku and his father, Bardock, kind of bucked that trend and showed that they're powerful, even becoming the legendary Super Saiyan. So legendary. Mm-hmm. But back on to Goku here. Lovable idiot, but dude, you have two children. It's like, you know what's going on. Like, e- either you're playing dumb or you're dumb. There's no two ways to look at it. Very dumb. Uh, so Very, very dumb. So, <laughs> even Bezita is surprised by this like he has you never kissed Chi Chi before you know what my hands are up I'm giving up give it up give it up uh, moving on to the next saga which is the universal survival saga and like we mentioned before Goku went to meet Uzeno uh, egging him on saying that hey we need the battle for the universe like you mentioned you promised you remember right that thing that you promised that you wanted to do yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, just a heads up. We're going to kill everybody when it's done. What? And here's the most interesting part. Goku, in Universe 10's eye, was it? Who was that team that looks like the Ginyu squad? Universe 10? Yeah, sorry, Universe 11. You, oh, the the uh, Pride Troopers. Yes, uh, Topo and his gangs. So, anywho, in their eyes... They view Goku as the villain. Well, with good reason. He's getting everyone killed. Yes. Mm-hmm. You idiot, Goku. <laughs> Goku, you idiot. <laughs> oh, wow. So, let's take it from the top. So, Goku goes to Zeno, egging him on to start the tournament, and Zeno does, and the rule of the tournament is uh, winner gets to keep their universe, losers gets destroyed. Even the gods. Loser dies. Except for the angels. And this puts a really strong or high pressure on the gods to find the best fighters out of the universe. And, well, for uh, Goku's universe, Universe 7, he has everything planned out to select the fighters. 
And said fighters are himself, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Tenshin Han, Master Roshi, Android 17 and 18, uh, and Krillin. And the last fighter would be Majin Buu. Would be, keywords. Yes. A lot of people are upset by how they removed Majin Buu from the roster. Again. Mm -hmm. When Silver State remove, there's a good explanation for this. Majin Buu was sleeping. And with that kind of sleep, Mr. Satan said that he won't wake up for at least two months. So, oh no, the Universe 7 fighters have a big problem here. Who would be a good candidate to replace Majin Buu? Goku just says it. Oh, let's get Frieza. And everyone, everyone is saying, no, Goku, that's a terrible idea. That's not what we should do. And he doesn't listen. This is th this is the unofficial title of the arc. Goku doesn't listen. Uh, I thought it was Dr Dragon Ball Super. Goku, that's a terrible idea. Not far from the truth there. And you know what? It Chicken butt? <laughs> no. And you know what? In terms of storytelling, it's genius. Me and my friend, we had this discussion about the intro and the saga. And I told my friend that, uh, nah, wait, man, like, they won't use Frieza as one of the main fighters for this series. I won't believe it because in the intro, they showed Majin Buu being there, even in the song credits or whatnot. I told him that I won't believe it till they change Majin Buu to Frieza. And darn it, in today's episode, they did. Oh. <laughs> smart, smart. And we're pretty much at the point, so much time was devoted to gathering the roster. This was all sort of follow-up, where are they now? Mm -hmm. I was especially uh, interested in how Seventeen was going to act. He's he's mellowed out quite a bit. And has a family, by the way. And has a family, that's something else. I was surprised at how chill he was at the thought that everyone could be wiped out. <laughs> yeah. He's like, well, whatevs. Yep, and at the same time, too, I can really see him like, oh, the universe is going to end? Well, time for me to spend time with my family. They managed to persuade him, however. Mm -hmm. Like you do. Yep, and here's the thing. Most of the fighters on the roster here said no to Goku's invitation. And... Yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to get people who enjoy fighting to take part in a tournament of power. Who knew? Yeah. The thing is, okay, we, let's start with Vegeta. Vegeta, Vegeta here... Babies on the way, the one to leave Bluma, even with the promise of 10 million zinnies. Vegeta says, nah, I need to do this. Wish comes in, says, okay, done. Baby's out, baby's safe. Now you're coming into the fight. Okay. Uh, Gohan here, well, he has to because he knows the reason. Piccolo also does too. Master Roshi, Ten Shin Han here, were invited because of money. So does Krillin and 18, and so does 17. But all of them didn't want to, to begin with. Which... Shows that, well, that's the difference between Goku and everyone else. Goku is hungry for battle. A lot of these folks, they train to be ready, but they don't actively seek combat. It's more that they, they're, they stand on guard and they want to be ready, but they don't want to push it, which in all honesty, I think is a healthier viewpoint. True. And with Krillin, in the future, he became a police officer. So he needs to train to protect the, well, um, his town. So that's cool. 18 doesn't really need to train because, well, what reason there is? <laughs> She's basically cybernetically enhanced. Oh, yep. Yep. That, that's true, too. And one hot mama. No, she's literally a mama. Yep. Indeed. Mama uh, mia, pasta basula. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, as for now, in terms of the anime, the fight has just started. And we get to see that it's an interesting fight that's going on. It's a battle royale. Uh, 11 universes, was it? Or how many fighters were there? I do remember that a few of the fighters were excluded because their power levels were high enough to pass. Would you say they were over 9,000? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm trying to look for here. Uh, who were excluded? Well, either way, what can I say? There's just so many of them. It's all, they're, they're all great designs, but at some point you're just like, I'm on overload. This is too many new characters. 
I know half of you, most of you are here just to get knocked off the platform. <laughs> yep, true. That. Spiraling into oblivion. Oh, yeah. True. And by the way, with this tournament of powers, the few rule is no weapons unless it's a skill type thing, uh, no killing, and all people who can fly cannot fly anymore. So, yeah. Unless you were born with wings. Yeah. Which is why you, you wish they'd install the jetpack on 17 and 18. <laughs> yeah. But still, uh, this saga, this story, it's interesting. I like where it's going, but for the love of God, I do not like Goku. Don't you mean for the love of Zeno? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, why not, right? <laughs> uh, Goku, Goku's the one, he never seems to take responsibility for his actions. And even, you have to guilt him into it. True that. But either way, we'll see, we'll see how it unfolds. It's an enjoyable story, and because it has such a large cast, the fact that the main character is making some bad choices, it doesn't mean you lose faith in the whole series, just a little bit on Goku. Yeah, true that too. I mean, with Dragon Ball, there's always ups and downs, and there's always one of those characters that's gonna uh, do a huge mistake. But over here, it's really, really highlighted. And by the way, it's universe 1, 5, 8, and 12. Oh, so there are 12. I thought there was a dozen. I don't know if there's a baker's dozen. <laughs> uh, yeah. But still. But anyway, uh, it's an enjoyable series. It's fun. It's got humor. But it can, in true Dragon Ball style, it can filibuster. Yeah. And most of the fillers that I notice are you can either watch them or not. It's like, it depends on the episode, really. I don't really know what to say Uh, i enjoy most of the fillers but sometimes like yeah this doesn't really need to be here i can skip it kind of deal although you will miss out on some grand comedy as often the fillers are the funniest parts Mm, true and also a bit of info drops sometimes not not huge but they're there to put some exposition on as of today the latest episode is out and we get to see the fight, like I mentioned before, uh, they just gathered, and today is the fight. And what? That is episode ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. Wow, they've they've come a long way very quickly. True that. True that. So, well, yeah, that's our overall thoughts on the Dragon Ball Super. Like, there's good, there's bad, and there's enjoyable moments. There's cringe. I won't say cringe. I I don't think I cringe, but there's face palming moments with certain characters, Goku, and the fight scene is top notch. That's all I can say. One of the few things that I enjoy with Dragon Ball is the fights. Although I guess we should also mention that there have been points where the animation was noticeably different. It's part of a growing trend in Japan where animation will be completed to get done in time for air but then we'll be doubled back and improved for the Blu-ray release. Indeed. And that that big slip up there was uh, highlighted in the first few episodes, like the Beerus saga, when Goku first fought Beerus. The animation there was, oh my god, what the hell were they thinking? And like Silver said, they were pressed on time, so they had to do that. Ah, uh, but really... The- if you're at all interested in Dragon Ball, I'd recommend giving it a watch because it is it is a good time. True that. It's happy times. True that. And if well, I'm guessing people here who have watched Dragon Ball are going to watch Dragon Ball, and you should. It's a really fun anime. And ooh, sorry, go ahead. I'm just saying to Manga Common, if you happen to be watching this, I want you to have Safi sit down, duct tape her to the chair. And have her watch uh, the Dragon Ball Super a la Clockwork Orange. <laughs> Ooh, kinky. Just remember the eye drops. <laughs> Very important, the eye drops. Oh, wow. Uh, well, all right. So, anywho, that's our overall thoughts on Dragon Ball Super. But before we officially call it quits, Silver, anything to add before we head out? Piccolo, Gohan, Krillin, Future Trunks. And Whis, my my favorite characters of the of the show so far. Ah, we we didn't really mention favorite, and not favorite, um, least favorite. Ooh, least favorite. Ah, actually, I guess it would be Goku for how negative he's acting. Oh uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, wow, Goku. Uh, as for me, <clears throat> I, my favorite would be Vegeta, Roshi, um, Virus, and who else were they? Probably, you know what? Gohan, because that one filler arc where Gohan became, uh, what was it again? Uh, Mr. Great Saiyan yeah, Man. Yeah, Great Saiyan Man arc. That was fun. That was fun to see. Very fun. Yeah. E- even with that, ooh, infidelity that happened. Ooh, Videl says, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's like, I know what you're really up to. Yeah, it's like, my Gohan here is all powerful, so yeah, whatever. You're not up to his level. <laughs> Plus, he can kill you with with one flick. Yep. <laughs> uh, my least favorite character would be Goku. Goku, and Goku. Oh dear. Oh dear. <sighs> Goku. What? I I think I stated up why I dislike him. Do I really need to repeat myself? So no, just Goku. You know what? I'm for, for people at home want to know why. I I'll link a video in the links below so you can. See or oh, know why I dislike him. It's a really fun watch. Anywho, speak to the What are we going to do? Well, I believe we need to get back to episode reviews of the My Little Ponies. Yes, th- that's at least happy time. The, the ride never truly ends, but I, I swear, it seems like even the production companies are in a rush to get everything out there all at once. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember the uh, leaks that happened. Well, n- technically not leaks since they're shown in Canada, but still. But it w- it will be time for Fluttershy leans in. Oh wow, that is a very interesting episode. Like, oh god. So we will look forward to ha- seeing you all for that episode review. Indeed, indeed. Oh, one thing I need to mention before we officially leave: people are were asking if we skip one of the comic arcs in the um, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic episodes. And, well, kind of. Cognitive dissonance. <laughs> and, yeah, it's the election arc. And I, I think me and Silver and also Sappy here would agree that nothing would be gained if we do review that. We could give a headache, I mean... Basically, there's an election between an incredibly rich man and a and a political woman mm-hmm. uh, for mayor of Ponyville. The guy wins, and everything goes to rot and ruin. Mm-hmm. I'm trying very hard to contain myself right now, but it's not <laughs> easy. Well, now you know how I feel with Goku. <laughs> yes, but Goku's fiction. This is life imitating art. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, but uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm all I'm all I'm up in it now. Yeah, I'm crass. I'm very crass indeed. And there. Yeah. Uh, all right. So anywho, um, one of the few reasons why at first it was a mistake, but nah, right now it seems that it's too close to reality. So I and one of the few things that we mentioned in this show is not to talk about politics. And I think this is too close to politics. Not fun. So our overall thoughts on the issue is interesting. Too soon or they knew that it was close to the real life elections. So they kind of milk that there. And in the end, it was an okay comic. So that's my thoughts on it. Silver, what are your thoughts on the comics? Nice to see Mayor Mayor being more of a leader and having a competent role. The ponies handled the Tatsalworm crisis with uh, impressive efficiency and not just save us main six, but everybody contributes. Mm-hmm. Even Diamond Tiara uh, got to be a bit more likable character as she's been very silent in the show as of late. Mm-hmm. The only person who doesn't come out looking all that great is Filthy Rich, who looks terribly incompetent. And I... He seems like a decent guy in the show. I'll certainly say that I don't consider Filthy Rich or Mayor Mayor to be proxies for Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Other than the genders, there is, and perhaps uh, Filthy's wealth, there is nothing to connect them. Yeah, and, and that's that too. I mean, yeah, you know what? It's an okay comic. I say skip it if you can. There's nothing to gain out of it. 
Other than the realization that pony villains are terrible at elections. But then again, I'm an American. <laughs> Clearly, we have no right to criticize. <laughs> uh, no comment there. But anywho, Silver, like you mentioned before, uh, next week we're going to review Fratech Eileen's Inn. It's a very interesting episode. I like it very much. And, well, full review will be next week. And, yeah, full review will be next week. So, anywho, I would like to thank Nemdra Kotorius for the suggestion and um, sponsored video for this one. Thank you, Nem. Uh, now you know how I feel about Dragon Ball Super and how I feel about Goku, the idiot. <laughs> Don't hold back. I sense restraint. <laughs> totally. So, anywho, uh, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. And all the support you give really helps this show out. So anyway, I would like to thank a few people like Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nemtrakatoria, Starstream, Master of Leg, and also our newest supporter, Jeffrey. Thank you so much for the support, guys. You make this really awesome to do. And well, with that, I have to say that I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Vaquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another pony review. Yay! That's awesome. See ya! Adios! Silver, did I mention to you how much I hate Goku? I think you might have mentioned it somewhere. Uh, oh, also, Dragon Ball GT, that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> well, uh, people will debate that at, at nauseum. I think better we didn't get into that. Yeah.